And welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori, and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook, and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. For the first time here at Whippoorwill Holler Homestead, we're going to be doing a promotional video today, so y'all hang with us. We're doing it with for Greenstock Vertical Gardening, and this is going to be so much fun. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I think it's going to be a really nice setup and be pretty. So go to their website. They also come up with a new watering system. They have seeds and fertilizer. Choose which vertical garden you want. They have all kinds of accessories to go with your planter. Greenstock's patented watering system delivers fresh water to every tier at the same time so you don't have to water each pocket by hand separately, which makes it a really good system. So, find your planter you want, assemble your planter, plant your plants, your seeds, grow and enjoy it. I know that we're going to enjoy ours with the pretty flowers and all the herbs that we're going to be planting in ours. If you're interested in one of these vertical planters, just go down to my description box below in my information box and go down and find the link and use my promotional link Whipper Wheel, any proceeds, any compensation that I make off of a sale for one of these vertical planters will go straight to St. Jude's Children Research Hospital. It is very dear to our heart, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, finding cure and saving children. Okay, so our, we're fixing to mix our soil for our vertical green stalk. And what I've got in here is there's about there's 80 pounds of composted cow manure with sticks. It's a, it's a made up compost. There's not a lot of nitrogen. There's like 0 0.5 nitrogen in it. And then I've got a five gallon bucket of peat moss and we're gonna put it in here we're gonna mix it all up and this is what called what vermiculite say it again vermiculite vermiculite yeah okay I'm gonna go ahead and make it an ideal. The bag's coming all apart. So that's probably two gallon, two and a half gallon. Let's 
So we're basically gonna do this by what we feel like it needs. We might need to add a little more or something to it. You hear that woodpecker? I hear him. He's out there on that hollow limb, ain't he? <laughs> they sent us the pretty green planter, green stock planter. I like the green. They're deep. Each planter that you're going to be planting your plant or your seed in, it's pretty deep. So anything that's got deep rooted roots. This planter is going to do real good for it. And what do you say that stuff's for? Vermiculite? Yes. Put your vermiculite and your peat moss, and that's going to kind of aerate your soil. And okay. Because I knew the peat moss, but this, I've never used this other. The, if your soil <laughs> is too tight, your roots, they can't breathe. They kind of get suffocated and... This just kind of softens your... That's why I like growing potatoes and soft bear. Yeah. So they can spread out and grow. You know, I watched some people on video. They actually grew potatoes in this vertical green stock. Really? Yes. They. I guess they put one seed potato per one or two per planter, per little planter there. And it grew potatoes in there. Not you know what a, you I'm know. thinking? What? I'm like Laura Brown. <laughs> I don't have a big enough bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I put... Are you taking up my bad habits? I'm taking up your bad habits. I think maybe I should have put 40 pounds in there first. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let you stir that and I'm going to get my plants together. Danny, you need to put this on a on a level place. A lot of people will put it like on their patios or porches, uh, concrete driveways or whatever. Decks. Decks. We don't have that here. So we didn't put it, we did get wheels, some very heavy duty wheels. It comes with good wheels. And, but we're not gonna use the wheels because we're putting it right here in fr front of the house at the corner here, right by my rain barrel. And um, so he put a, uh, what is that? A con concrete patio type. Concrete patio pathway. Just a pad. Yeah. And then I leveled it and I took a a level itself and leveled it. Might, if you want it level, because if you don't, it's not going to feed your water right. Right, because you, your water's going to be feeding mm -hmm. down from the top, so it needs to be level. Now then, it does come with a drain. There's the hose. Right there. <clears throat> There's a hose right here. So if you've got it on the back of your deck, and you don't want, you know, you don't want water on your deck all the time. So you could run this down between the cracks of the deck or off to the side of the deck where it'd run out on the ground. So mm -hmm. there's a place on the side for it? There's a, right down here at the bottom, there's a place to stick it in. Right there. So you can drain the water if there's water drainage, chill. Yeah. It's just for excess water is all it's for. Yeah. It's for excess, too much water. <clears throat> so we got our first... Uh, planter sitting on the bottom, and um, I'm gonna show them. We bring them up there. Let me show that. And if you look on these planters, of course, there's a hole right through here. That's where water will go through. The water's also gonna come through, and it's gonna drip through all these little holes. 
But you see this hive, when you're putting your your soil and stuff in there, you, you're going to want to cover that up. We're so, just going to put a little lid over So it. we just found a little black lid to put over that so we don't get any kind of dirt <coughs> or anything down in that hole. So This is very well built, very heavy. Very heavy. I've seen a video um, where <laughs> they dropped it off as tall as this house. Yeah. And it didn't bust. I mean, it's very heavy duty. Very well uh, Very made. well made. This company, I, I'm just very impressed with this company. They're here in the USA. They are a very Christian, family-oriented business. And they're just good people. And they talk to me personally. And, you know, I don't do a lot of promotional stuff. But I've been wanting to do one of these, and I just think this is a very, very good product. So we're going to start putting it together, and we'll show you little bits and pieces. Then we're going to come back, and I'll show you everything I'm going to be planting in it. So how deep is this going to go? I'll tell you. As far down as it goes. You gotta line up your, you got holes, hard to see. You want each hole lined up with the center of your pocket. So we'll get all get water. So when you put your second one on, you line it up. It's pre-cut. It's pre-cut and you just line it up. Where it's the opposite direction to your last one. So the top of it is what they call the water nothing. dispenser. <laughs> Something. <laughs> but that's where you're going to fill it up. And it does show you it's got fill lines on each side. But the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and kind of water each little planter just a little and then come back and fill this up before you plant anything. Well, it's the next day. And it got dark on us, so I didn't get everything planted. But I got everything planted except this one hole right here, <laughs> this one pocket. I run out, and I wanted one more herb plant. So after work, I ran and got me another herb to put in this pocket. And uh, I got me a Thai basil. I just love Thai basil. And uh, I needed another plant. So I thought, I'm just going to put some Thai basil in here. And then I think this fall, when things, when the weather gets too cold, I'm going to pull this Thai basil out and I'm going to put it in the high tunnel for the winter. So I'm just going to finish this off. This planter turned out so pretty. 
Mr. Brown done a good job. Now I want to talk to you a little bit more about the um, why I use the vermiculite and the peat moss with my compost, uh, my soil. In a container like this, I've done enough container gardening that, especially one that's going to be draining that many tears down like that, you've got to open that that um, that soil up. If if you just put regular soil in there, garden soil or something like that, it's going to compact. So when you, when you're uh, when you water it and it's trying to drain through all them holes. You want it to be able to free th flow through all of that. And you don't want something that's going to compact really hard. That vermiculite and the peat moss and all of that together is going to help hold the moisture, but it's also going to let it uh, pull down through every every tier. It's going to go ahead and drain good through all them. It's going to, it aerates that soil and it does just a really good job of holding the moisture in too. So that's the reason that I use what I use to put here in my container. So y'all do a lot of research. Uh, I know a lot of y'all can't garden like you used to. So something like this, that you're not going to have to do a lot of bending and, and getting down on the ground. And it's up tall like this. And you don't have to get one this tall. You can get, get it as tall as you want it to be able to work with it. And um, they also, they have, uh, oh, I forget what they're called, but um, it's like, it's almost like if you were, if you put, say you were growing cucumbers in this whole vertical garden, or you were growing, I've seen people grow nothing but green beans in them, cucumbers, strawberries, full of strawberries, and stuff like that. So they have a lot of different accessories that go with these green stock vertical uh, planters that uh, that whichever vegetable or whatever you decide to grow, there's just different accessories that, that are handy to, to help you out. So anyways, I think this turned out really good. So with mine this year, I'm growing flowers and herbs in it. That's just what I chose to do because we, we've got our garden out. Um, it's too late to be planting more strawberries in, in this or anything like that. Um, so I wanted something pretty, but something because I love herbs and I just plant herbs everywhere. My front garden, my kitchen garden, everywhere you think I've got herbs. So, herbs and flowers is what I've got in it, and it did. It turned out really pretty. Rain barrel. I've got several rain barrels set up around my house and out at the greenhouse. Um, and, of course, you've seen how you water it from the top and everything, but you can also fertilize from the top, too. You just use whatever kind of fertilizer that you use for your, your plants, your vegetables, your flowers. And you'll just mix it up in a container with your water. However, if you're using something that maybe needs a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of fertilizer to a gallon of water, you just mix that up and just pour it up here and it will it'll go down to every tier just like that. So that's an easy way to also fertilize all your plants in here. Or you can go through there and fertilize them each pocket at a time. That's just up to you. Um, but starting out, I think they're, they're, it looks really good. So I think my little vines here are going to grow and they're going to vine down and look pretty too. So if this gives you any idea, there's just all kinds of vegetables, flowers, and herbs that you can grow in these. So I hope you liked this part of the video. Like I said, the company reached out to me. I've been wanting one for a long time, so I'm very proud that I did. And uh, if you go down to my description box below the video and click on more, and of course my all my information will come down 
and that's where all of my information is where all my recipes and everything like that is and there'll also be a link that you can go to to look at these green stock vertical planters here um, I'll put my promotional code which is whippoorwill and I'll put that down there too but anything if anybody purchases anything with my whippoorwill uh, promotional code any of the proceeds or any of the commissions that I make will go to St. Jude's Hospital that is a, a children's hospital that um, they've done a lot of research on children's cancer and uh, my nephew who's a grown man now spent a lot a long time at St. Jude's when he was just a little bitty thing he come down with leukemia uh, St. Jude's is a beautiful place with beautiful people doctors nurses and uh, they have a place for the whole family to stay if needed while the child is there in St. Jude's being cared for lovingly and um, it's just a wonderful place so anyways I just want to tell you all that because I just when it comes to children it just it holds a really big place in my heart so anyways let's go to the back garden and now that we've got this finished I'm very proud of it let's go to the back garden and let's look at the green peas because there's a bunch of them that needs to be picked and let's see how everything's doing okay we're back here in the kitchen garden back behind the house and I want you to look how my green peas have produced in this container uh, bed. They've done really well. Now, Mr. Brown has a bunch of green peas planted out in the big garden, too. But I had planted these way before he planted his. And uh, some of them are really getting ready. I didn't pick some already. I wasn't able to pick enough to really put up. But I picked enough for us to eat, and they was really good. Um, I want to show y'all how, how you know when a green pea, these are, um, oh, what is the name of these peas? Anyways, these are just a, just a regular, uh, table green pea. Um, but I want you to look, I got dirt under my nails, um, you see how fat that pea pot is. What you want to do is you want to, and you can see through it too, and you can see that the peas in there, there's not very many peas in this pod, but they're big and they're ready to pick. But you can feel them. You can feel them on here, like this one. If you look at this one, you can tell it's not ready to pick. And if I feel of this one, I can tell it's not ready to pick. The peas inside just aren't very big. But this one right here, there's no give to it in the peas. I can feel the peas in there and they're just the right size. So I'll open this one up and I'll show you. <clears throat> Me and Mr. Brown love green peas. He loves them better than he does green beans. Mr. Brown's not a big green bean eater. I did plant some more green beans. But uh, you can see there's the little peas so this one's ready so i'm going to pick some more and uh, whatever i get today i'll go ahead and i'll blanch them and i'll put them in the freezer and as my other ones get ready to be picked um, i'll do them the same way till i get quite a few peas ready and uh, so that's how i put them up i like my green peas i like them better frozen than I do any other way. I think they, they stay fresher, they taste fresher, so <clears throat> so that's what I'll be doing. It's picking my green peas. And these, I, the ones we ate are so sweet. These are really sweet. We ate the ones that I picked the other day. I made us a salad and uh, I just kind of blanched them and put them in the refrigerator. The next day we made a salad and put these peas on them. And they're really good.
You know, Mr. Brown planted a bunch of potatoes again. So I can see myself making, like Grandma always made and taught me to make, was fresh green peas and little new potatoes and uh, cream them up, make cream peas and potatoes. So good with piece of cornbread. There's a spider. Danny asked me the other day, he said, how come you can't just leave the ones that are ready on the vine till all the other ones get ready? Well, what happens is they start going the other way. So you don't want to do that. Let's walk around and look at the garden a little bit. There is the roosters and the rooster and all the ladies out getting them some bugs. We keep them up during the day and let them out in the afternoon. This here's in the back in the kitchen garden. The tomatoes are doing really good. They do a little bit of weeding back here. I'm still planting, still planting herbs and flowers. This here is mainly for bees and butterflies. Everything that I've got planted right in this area is for to attract my bees and and butterflies and. day lilies. I've got some yarrow planted down in there. I hope it makes it this year. The oregano is really taking off. My hyssop and my bee balm are coming on up. And I had to get my uh, shade cloth out for my brassicas and stuff. It's getting too hot in there for them. So I, my Rutgers are really getting tall. And my bush tomatoes down here, they're they're really green and lush looking. My, my pumpkins are kind of taking the bed over. My mullein plant, my cherry tree, it actually had three little cherries on it this year. So hopefully next year, maybe I'll get some cherries. My cabbages are doing really good. And there's my peas back there. My green beans are against the fence back there. So, things are really looking good. I'm hoping to have quite a bit of cabbage to put up this year. I want to make some kraut. My lavender bed is so pretty. The lavender is so deep and purple right now. It attracts a lot of bees. You better get over there with that rooster. There's my little pig I got for Mother's Day. Isn't they cute? Nanny's weed eating. Still got some weed eating to do over here. Adele's little memory garden here. Needing some weed eating. But it's getting green and lush. And I would have had a lot of beautiful irises that come up and already bloomed. And, uh... I hope some more come on up and bloom. And there's different different uh, perennials that I've got out there that are going to come on up and bloom. It just takes them a little while. Once it warms up. This right here is at the side of the house. Got my little place where I can sit and rest and look over Adele's little garden. Adele was my friend that passed away several years ago. 
And everything that I planted in the water trough has really took off. It's filling the it's really filling it all out and looking good. I've even got some wildflowers planted in there. And a tomato plant. I've got some ground cover down there that I'm going to get planted. My sweet peas up there in the hanging basket, they're not blooming yet. And this is just my little rustic, whimsical garden out front. And my rose bush did bloom. There's my little wash tubs full of flowers and roses. And got the water hose out trying to get things watered. So everything's looking up. I'm growing. My elephant ears, they'll get big. They got really big last year. And there's, that is uh, bacon right there. And then Peach is down there laying down resting. So they're still growing. The pond, the waters went down on the pond. We ain't had much rain here lately. And we st that thing's still oh, leaking water. We'll get it fixed one of these days. So yeah, bacon's uh, still growing. So the hogs have done really well. There's the front of the house. There's another part of Adele's garden. Here's by the greenhouse. Mr. Brown's garden. That was my grandpa's. I still have it. It's about 80 years old. His potatoes. That's the Red Ripper peas. There's his green peas. Now on the other side of the green peas, he's got Cherokee purple tomatoes. And that beautiful rose. Okay. <laughs> well, we're in from the garden. It is about 10 till 8. Well, I'm in from the garden. Mr. Brown's still out there weed eating. He's got a fishing tournament Saturday, so he's trying to get a lot done just like I am. I'll be going Saturday into Springfield, Missouri. I've got children and grandkids there that I'm going to go visit. And I'm getting really excited because I haven't seen them in a while. So I come in, got cleaned up, drank my lemonade. That hit the spot too. You know, when you're gardening, whether it's just, it's your vegetable garden, it's all them flowers and herbs. I'm telling you, it's a job. Uh, I can't even remember. I guess it was last week we had a little bit of rain. So we're needing a little bit more rain. I try to stay on top of all the water, but it just wears me out sometimes. <laughs> I come in from work, and sometimes it's not, you know, I don't get outside till probably after 7 o'clock sometimes at night. So we're out there till sometimes even after dark, especially Mr. Brown trying to get stuff done, but that's just what it takes. So retirement can't get here soon enough, that's for sure. I hope you all enjoyed this video. You know, sometimes we just have to uh, just settle back and and just uh, come into our lives and let us just take you around to our everyday life and things that we do. And I hope you all enjoyed the, seeing us plant the, the green stock. Uh, whether if you're interested in it or not, it doesn't matter. I just like to share that stuff with you. And uh, it, I think it turned out really pretty. And the watering uh, system in it is a really good deal. I think it does a wonderful job the way that it's set up. So I think I'm going to enjoy it. But uh, everything's just really starting to grow since it's warmed up. And uh, trying to keep things uh, going. And it's, and y'all know, anybody's got a garden, it, it is a job. But we also know that that's what's going to keep us fed, keep us sustainable, 
and uh, just being out there and and getting your hands dirty and your getting your feet in that dirt and and just breathing in nothing but the beautiful air outside I mean here where we live um, it's it's uh, it's just fresh air I used to live in when I was a little girl I lived in Pasadena Texas didn't live too far from paper mill and there was no fresh air when I moved up here to Arkansas, finally, when I was 13 years old, I left and never went back. Um, it took me a while for me to get healthy. Um, I was pretty sickly, and look at me now. <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Um, Going to be 60 years old in several months, and I feel pretty good, except for the old arthritis and stuff that comes along with getting older. But... Uh, I just believe in getting out there. And if it's nothing but just for peace of mind, um, your garden, whether it's big, little, it doesn't matter. When you just sit there and uh, and just enjoy what you've accomplished and it just, you know, it started in the garden and hopefully it'll end in the garden. And it's just a big part of our life, and I hope it is yours, too. But anyways, I hope y'all enjoyed being, just being with us. Um, I got a video coming up, Cooking for Two. A lot of y'all are really interested in the Cooking for Two. And uh, I've got several main dishes, but I have some cookie recipes and stuff for just two people. So that you don't have to cook a whole lot of cookies and uh, cakes and stuff like that. So I got some of them coming up. And um, I got a couple of keto and... Just regular recipes like I always do. And, of course, we're going to be doing some more canning and all that stuff. Uh, in July, about the middle of July, we're going to be going to Texas for a little while to see my cousin Julie. It'll be her birthday. And uh, we're going to be staying there for a little while. Uh, we've rented a, a house on the lake, and Danny's going to do a lot of fishing. And uh, Julie will come stay with me, hopefully. And... Uh, I'll do some videos there at that at beautiful Lake Fork. Uh, we've been there before, and y'all got to see some of that before, too. But anyways, I just wanted to bring y'all along, along and, and share some of the stuff we was doing this week. I want to show y'all something because <coughs> I think I shared this with y'all uh, last gardening season. And it was my uh, Victorian kitchen garden book. And a lot of y'all found this book. Y'all went online and found this book and I just I was so happy that you did but uh, I still haven't got to write anything down in it I need to uh, but I just love reading this thing I love all the pictures in it my clock's going off this is just a really fun fun book A lot of y'all said that y'all ordered the book when you found it ordered because you just love the pictures in it. it. Says down here, it says, if in January the sun doth much appear, March and April will pay full dear. So it's got little quotes and stuff like that in it. It's got advice about uh, gardening got place where you can record stuff and that's what I I meant to do here too uh, you know each month record what you know what I'm going what's going on with my different with maybe the greenhouse and different things that I'm started and stuff like that but I just ain't had time yet but it's really fun reading all this stuff so um, some of y'all that did find this book already if you want to share in the comments how you found the book please share it with others because uh, I can't remember where some of y'all found them, but it is a beautiful, beautiful book, and I always get it out, and just, just to look at the pictures and read. I can read this stuff over and over and over, and it just never gets old or gets boring to me.
So right here where it says February and it gives you advice about different flower, your flower garden, your fruit garden, your vegetable garden. Here it says the vegetable garden in February. It says horse manure, leaves from the woods, or any refuse hops from the breweries when they can be obtained. May be good together towards the latter part of the month and mixed in turn to get sweetened, which means to to get ready. Preparing for the hot beds. Manure that is to be used for the crops should be turned and broken up as fine as possible, for it should be known that the more completely manure of any kind can be mixed with the soil, the better will be the crop. And here along with all the pretty pictures, it's just more more advice, more stories. Here we got what well, it says, tool lore. It says, witches are said to be disliked. Witches are said to dislike the wood of an ash tree, also known as rowan tree. An iron tool with the ashwood handle promises security for its owner. Planted in the garden, it protects the family, the house, and the crop against evil. So that's instead of folklore, that's tool lore. Here it says, any sharp tool, such as a hoe or spade, brought into the house, will cut the house, holds good fortune in half. It must be immediately taken outside by the same door through which it came through. <laughs> Oh, my. But anyways. Oh, and here's even got a place for recipes. I can't wait to start filling in this book. So, yes. I know some of y'all would love this book. And if some of y'all have already found the book, I got this at a flea market for $1. I mean, how could you do any better than that? So, any of y'all that have been able to obtain this book, please, please, let the others know. We're going to sign off with y'all for now, and uh, we'll be back with you in a couple of days. We'll probably be cooking up something. Who knows? We may be cooking outside. You just never know about us. But uh, anyways, we enjoyed being with y'all, guys. I want I, I want y'all to have a beautiful, wonderful weekend. We pray for all y'all that are in bad health and are having hard times. Uh, we have uh, we have um, subscriber friends that are over in the Ukraine that are doctors and nurses that are out there and we want to pray for y'all. I don't know if any of y'all have seen the comments by some of them, but some of the doctors and nurses have been con commenting on some of my videos. So we just pray for them. We pray for the world over and just know that me and Mr. Brown love all y'all very much. And we hope that y'all stick with us and stay with us for as long as we can be here with you. So God bless everybody. We'll see you in a couple of days.